Smile On. Brought to you by Texaco. In all 50 states, you can trust your car to the man who wears the star. The biggest friend your car has ever had. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Phyllis Newman. Thank you. It's my great pleasure to introduce a very talented actor, one of whose recent successes was the Broadway play Love, Mr. Larry Blyden. Thank you, Philip. I get to introduce a lady who is a star of radio, a star of the movies, a star of television, a star of the theater, and a star of life. Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Larry. And I'll shine on you anytime. <laughs> and now, a gentleman I've been running around with all afternoon. On the tennis court, that is. It was a love set. We all love each other. We love each other, Phyllis and Bennett Surf and myself. And here is one half of that team, Bennett Surf. I'm sure you all know by this time what a superb panel moderator John Daly is. My interest, you know, he's also an author. He just proposed to do a book for Random House. It's going to be a book about the sports exploits of great sports figures in baseball, tennis, hockey, golf. He's got a name for it, too. He's calling it Athlete's Feats. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the author of Athlete's Feats, John Charles Daly. <laughs> That certainly was absorbing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Miss Phyllis and Larry Blyden, welcome to this night's festivities. Thank you. As we always say, it's going to be very easy. We've got some very interesting occupations, but I'm sure that you'll be able to identify them very quickly. In any event, we want you to enjoy the next half hour because we intend to enjoy it in part at your expense, I might add. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, but uh, right now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Carolyn Smallwood, right, ma'am? Is it Miss or Mrs. Mrs. Smallwood? And where are you from? Rutherford, New Jersey. Rutherford. That's not too far across the river. About 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's right. By what? Car. Car. <laughs> All righty, fine. All right, Mrs. Smallwood, may I present the panel? And now, will you join me over here, please, ma'am? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Smallwood is salaried and deals in a service. And we will begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Mrs. Smallwood, do you need any particular training for the service that you perform? Yes. A uh, college degree? No. It's no. not mandatory, Bennett. We will agree that a college degree would be helpful, but it is not a mandatory requirement for the service. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Newman. Mrs. Sw Smallwood, do you do what you do in New Jersey? Yes. When you do what you do, do you wear a... Do you wear something other than what you wear, are wearing now? You mean now in, 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 in general your, terms? Do you wear uh, something other than a regular dress? Street clothes? No. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Blyden. Do people come to you for this service? Yes, they do. Are you connected with a nonprofit making organization? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are? 
Yes. Uh, is there anything, uh, when, when people come to you for this service, do you touch them in any way? No. <laughs> no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you work then for some branch of the government? Yes. Uh, are you appointed to office? Yes. Do you have anything to do with law enforcement? No, I do not. A uh, small conference. Yes. <laughs> I think the show is over. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Smallwood and I want to be very fair about oh, this. Oh, I'm glad, John. We would agree that the work or the service which Mrs. Smallwood uh, purveys certainly has a relationship which could subsequently or perhaps almost automatically be equated with some process of law enforcement. Yes. In that case, I may continue. You may continue. Thank you, John. Uh, Mrs. Smallwood, do you, um, do people come to you wherever you are doing your job? Yes, they do. Do you have any title other than Mrs. Smallwood? I mean, there isn't a Judge Smallwood or a Dr. Smallwood or a <coughs> Minister That's Smallwood or how are no, you, Smallwood? No, there isn't. No, terribly sorry. That's four <laughs> down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Smallwood, when these people come to you, might it be that they're coming to you rather against their will and because they have to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Mrs. Smallwood agree that, would agree that she would hope that some come voluntarily, <laughs> willfully, happily, but engaging some I would, in... But most, I would say... <laughs> might not, you know, particularly enjoy the reasons which bring her. In other uh, words, Mrs. Her. Smallwood, you have some contact with prisoners of some sort. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that just tends to show yeah. you how Bennett's <laughs> mind works. That's five down and five to go, Miss Newman. Uh, if I came to you, Mrs. Smallwood, would we discuss my money or what I earn in any way? No. We wouldn't? Well, here again, with Mrs. Smallwood's permission, I will agree that expanding the area so that you make it a whole general area, that what you make, since you specifically made that point, might have some interest for Mrs. Smallwood, which would not necessarily be particular to the function which she is performing, but which have a, would have a bearing on it. Okay? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> You've lost me, but I can go on. You can go on. Mrs. <laughs> Terrific. Mrs. Smallwood, do a lot of people do what you do? Yes. Uh, do you, are you involved with paperwork? Yes. If I came to you, would you have a file of some kind on me? It would depend on exactly what your interests and um, other activities might be. It's possible that if you were active in an area in which Mrs. Smallwood had a particular interest, she would have, quote, a file, close quote, on you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Smallwood, would you interview me in any way? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't interview no. me? There's a silence there. Small conference. <laughs> Well, don't let them intimidate you. Oh, no. That settles that out very nicely. That's six down and four to go. <laughs> Mr. Blyden, you uh, wouldn't be interviewed by Mrs. Smallwood. I think we're all going ahead on the assumption that you are employed by the federal government. Is that a safe assumption? No, no. it isn't. That's seven down and three to go. That's how unsafe that is. Miss Francis. Mrs. Smallwood, does it ever happen that you have anything to do with young people in your job? No. You mean young here, you mean minors, right? That's or, eight or down and two majors, to go, Mr. Sir. Right <laughs> Mrs. Smallwood, would you have anything whatever to do with the holy act of matrimony? No. <laughs> Nine <laughs> down and one to go, Miss Newman? Mrs. Smallwood, if I came to you and we saw each other and talked to each other for a while, would I leave having gained something besides your good company? No. I wouldn't have gained anything, a no. job or anything you, like that. You'd have paid out, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, I thought it was tax, but... Yeah, but Mrs. Smallwood is the deputy, deputy collector of taxes. But I said oh. my finance. You'd pay out.
Mrs. Smallwood is particularly concerned with real estate and, and business taxes, which is why I had to give you so much obfuscation when I was trying to answer your you question. You just confused me. That's what I was going for taxes. For real sorry. Yeah. Real estate? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it deliberately. You were going to no. tax. Yes, it's Not much. Tax. No, but that's, uh, you see, the taking from, I think, is, I think. is uh, the most important aspect. The deputy collector of taxes for Rutherford, New Jersey. Thank Congratulations. That's a fine job. Nice to see you. We'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now to meet our next challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Richard T. Armstrong. Right, sir? Mr. Armstrong. Huntington, Long Island. Huntington, Long Island. I think it's only fair that we tell the panel that you're a pre-med student at Stony Brook yes, University sir. on Long Island, and we're talking particularly about summer occupation. Right, sir? Right. Good. Mr. Armstrong, may I present the panel? Yes, sir. Now, will you join me over here, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that uh, Mr. Armstrong is self-employed and deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Armstrong, is it a product that I might use? Yes. Is it a product that one would keep in the home? Perhaps. Is it a product that touches the person in any way? Yes. Uh, is it something that is worn on the person? No. <laughs> One down, nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Armstrong, is this product consumable? Yes. Is it put in the mouth? Yes. Is it solid? Yes. It's eaten, then? Yes. Does it, uh, has it ever been alive, or any part of it ever been alive? Yes. But when it's eaten, it's not alive anymore. Is that correct? No. <laughs> what? No. Well, oysters are still alive. I mean, so. uh, <coughs> actually, we've got to have a small conference because I have to learn a few things. <laughs> Would you pose your question again? Only be not better because we're trying to entrap you. Well, Believe me, not, I don't John. believe in entrapment. I, I, I stand against it 100% and four square. John, I trust you like I would a hooded cobra. <laughs> Well, it's too hot now, so I don't have my hood. But you, re you put the question again, because we want to be I'm going to drop it all together. And you want to drop it all together? Yeah, Fine. Because yeah. I don't remember what it was anymore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Armstrong, is this thing that was alive ever found in the water? Yes. Is it uh, something in the shelf shell family rather than the fish family? Yes. Is it either oysters or clams? Yes, it is. Well, now, which is it? <laughs> uh, in Huntington, Long Island? Mm -hmm. Oysters? No. Oh. Ta -da -da! <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. Is it clams? <laughs> it just came to me from nowhere. I don't know. But what does Mr. Armstrong have to do? You do something with clams, yep. right? You open them. That no. three down and seven to go, Mr. Blyden. <laughs> the clam comes to you open, and then you do something to it. Which no. <laughs> nope, that's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Armstrong is a clam digger. Yes. Clam digger! Uh, now, Dick's been doing this, what, five, six summers? Five, yes, yes. To, to help, uh, you know, with his college expenses. And he gets, what, three or four bushels a day? Yes, usually. And he, he's got a, a punt, I guess you'd call it, huh? A punt, a boat. Low, a boat. Do you have a high freeboard or low freeboard? It's uh, low. Low freeboard, yes. but not low enough to be a punt. No. Oh, geez, you would still call it a boat. Yes. Hmm. Well, we'll have to get together on that. Mr. Not Armstrong, willing to give an inch, huh? Mr. Armstrong, we, if Arlene and I could persuade you to teach John to clam a little bit, oh. we'd make it worth your while. <laughs> I don't know. If I could teach Bennett to clam up a little bit, it would be worth everybody's worthwhile. <laughs> right? Um, could, I, could I ask a question? I love Because I'm an inland fella. How do you dig clams? Um, well, at low tide, we'll work on the shore with... Uh, sort of a rake, you'll call it a basket rake. It'll be attached to your body and drag it through the mud. 
And at high tide, we work out of a boat with a, a rake on. When I say a rake, it's a big, wide apparatus with teeth on it. And it works on a long, extendable pole. We just dig the clams with that. Now it takes a lot of work. It's, uh, it's hard Stay to away. <laughs> Well, I think probably what Larry's getting at, and what I'd like to know, is how far under the sand surface would the clams lie? Uh, in the summer when I work, usually no more than a half inch. Half inch. Oh, so that you just sort of scoop the sand a half an inch or, or an inch of sand yes. up and you pull the clams up with them? Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I guess that's not deep enough for Bennett, so you'll miss him this summer. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> nice to have you with us, Dick. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which uh, my colleagues on the panel, as you know, are always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good. Will you enter, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, a different form of questioning this time. One question in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin with Larry Blyden. Are you in show business? Yes! <laughs> Miss Francis? Do you very often sing in show business? <laughs> no! One down and nine to go, that. Mr. Sir. That's very understandable. <laughs> Are you uh, chiefly famous as a movie actress? Yes. Miss Newman? Are you blonde? Now you're... Now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Blight, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, are you appearing in the theater at the present time? No. Two down at eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you... Uh, a leading woman in uh, motion pictures as opposed to a character actress? Oh, come see, come saw. She's a French that's, actress. That's good. It's yes, <laughs> yes and no. Yes or no. It could be answered both ways. Mr. Sir. Have you been in some very big pictures in the past year? Very successful pictures. Yes. Miss Newman? Were you just simply marvelous as Lolita's mother? Okay. Come see, come saw! <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Shelley Winters? Yeah! <laughs> I'm studying singing. <laughs> <laughs> when are you starting? <laughs> you may throw anything that's movable all the way well, across. No, you want see, to do I've only it. gotten as far as if you hold your head like this, the tones come out better. See, yes, no, but you can't go on the stage holding your head like I don't think you can. Is that what it takes, Shelley? Well, I've been I don't know. wanting that's to my sing for tells. years. <laughs> like yes, this. Yes. Where do you press? Out. Back here? Here and like mm -hmm. this. Now make a sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I guess it work for everybody. Tone in the, fr in the right place. This is a late hour to be doing it, mm -hmm. but uh, may we all, because I speak collectively for us, offer our great congratulations for that, em that uh, oh, Emmy, I listen to me, that, <laughs> that Oscar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blue. We all, uh, we all took great... Uh, pride and great pleasure in that uh, award to Thank you. Thank you and, very much. And, uh, we're tickled to death, and we're sure you're going to win some more, too. <laughs> it and is. I just hope... one of the few people in the, in the world who have two of those. Yeah, huh. very few people. And I just hope, for Bennett's sake, that the next one you do, uh, it'll be a singing role. Yes, wouldn't it be marvelous? We, I'll bring him. <laughs> I'll bring him to the Oscar ceremonies that night. I think you can. Gilded. Miss Shelley, thanks very much Thank for giving us this Sunday much. night. Thank nice you. to have you with
Well, I've got to admit, panel, you've done very well so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this work. And now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Sheila Sloan. Right, ma'am? Is it Miss or Mrs. Sloan? Mrs. And where are you from, Mrs. Sloan? London, England. London? Yes. Ah, wonderful. Nice to have you with us. Mrs. Sloan, may I present our panel? And now will you join me over here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, we can tell you that Mrs. Sloan is salaried and deals in a service. And we will begin things with uh, Phyllis Newman. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Sloan, could I use your service? Yes. Uh, if I used your service, would I come to where you are? Yes. And if I came to where you are, would I have to pay you for your service? Yes. Uh, would you touch me in any well, way? May I say, let's use the general. Pay, pay for the service. Pay for the service. Excuse yeah. me. Would uh, you touch me in any way? No. One down a night ago, Mr. Blyton. So your, uh, your service is then in an advisory capacity? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Mrs. Sloan, is there anything athletic about what you do? Does it require dexterity? Yes. Uh, could you be considered in any way a performer? Yes. Are you uh, part of a group that is performing at the same time? Yes. Is music used when, you're, when you perform? Yes. Uh, do you dance? No. That's Shall three down. <laughs> no, Dad. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Sloan, do you do what you do for an audience? Yes. Is it indoors? Usually. It can be done outdoors. Yes. Uh, is, it, is it any... Could it possibly be part of a circus or a carnival? Yes. Is it part of a circus? Yes. Are you, do you do some specialty in a circus? Yes. And as a group of other people does the service at the same time you do? Yes. Do you ever leave the ground in this service? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any wire or trapeze connected with what you no. do? No. No. Four dollars, <laughs> six to go, Miss Newman. You leave Very the ground. Day. Do you ever uh, use an animal in what you do? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Blyton. Do you do something connected with tumbling in some... No. <laughs> six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Mrs. Sloan, I hope you're not, but are you ever shot out of anything? <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. No, you're not shot out of a cannon. No. You do not do trapeze work. No. Oh. You do, n do not do uh, anything on a wire. No. You said that. Uh, are you any kind of an acrobat? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Newman. Do you uh, use implements in what you do? Yes. Uh, do you throw your implements back and forth? No. no. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Blyden. Do you stilt walk? <laughs> right, Mr. <Blyden. laughs> and the only, the only woman doing it, by the way, and presently touring on the West Coast with the Ringling Brothers Circus. And in 1962, Arlene and Bennett might remember this, we had a good husband with us from Ringling Brothers yes, there. Yes. Well, thank you. Now, did you have fun? Yes, yes good. I Good. It was lovely to have you with us. <laughs> thank okay. you. Good night. I'm afraid I've uh, abused all the time and used it up, so with the panel's permission, I will say the farewells with a note that... Uh, we much enjoyed having Phyllis John, back you do get us. in that Mrs. Sloan went to the Stilton School, wouldn't you? And Mrs. Sloan went to the Stilton School. <clears throat> and thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten. This is Johnny Olson speaking. Tonight's program was pre-recorded. <laughs>